Today I'm reviewing a 2013 Land Rover LR2. The LR2 model was sold in the US from the 2008 to 2015 model year and saw a minor refresh in 2013. The LR2 is the second iteration of the Freelander model that came before it, and the LR2 is sold in other markets around the world as the Freelander 2. Now the LR2 grows a little bit in size when compared with that original Freelander. It's slightly longer, it's slightly wider, and it sees a 40% increase in torsional rigidity. It's also built on the same underpinnings that you'll get in the Volvo S80 model, and early versions of the LR2 actually share the same 3.2 liter six cylinder that you get in that S80. Now without a doubt, the thing that is most striking about the LR2 when compared with that original Freelander is that we see a really nice improvement in the overall build quality. And you see that inside and out. Inside, it's got much higher quality materials, much better fit and finish, a lot more luxury and tech features. And then likewise on the exterior, improved uh, build quality, materials, and just overall the vehicle has a much more luxurious premium look than what we saw in that original Freelander. That's most noticeable on the front end of the vehicle where it's got a striking resemblance to the Range Rover, almost gives it a little bit of a baby Range Rover look. Now the LR2 did see a minor refresh in 2013. With that, you'll see a revised grille, headlight, tail light design. And then inside we see an improved seven inch touchscreen in the middle, a five inch screen in the instrument cluster and some additional color options. Now on the front end of the vehicle, I really like this brushed aluminum grille that we get. And it's got a really upscale headlight design with the integrated LED daytime running lights. We've got this lower fog light with a nice brushed aluminum loop around the exterior. And then we've got sprayers to clean off this lens. Overall, uh, the look of the LR2 is very similar to that original Freelander. But again, it's just got a more upscale look and we see some really nice clean lines throughout the LR2. I really like this crease that we get through the middle of the doors. Nice little trim piece along the bottom of the doors. And just overall, very clean conservative lines. You'll see it's got the trademark Land Rover side grille here. And then walking around to the rear, I also really like the tail lights that you get with this 2013 refresh. Very upscale look to it. Again, we'll see that little crease along the rear hatch. Some nice touch of chrome here on the rear as well. And a nice upper spoiler. You also see, of course, because it's a Land Rover, everything comes in a very premium state from the beginning. So it's got a nice set of stock wheels. And then again, we see that same side grille over here. Overall, really great looking vehicle. Now, of course, because it's a Land Rover, a common question is what is the off-road capability? Obviously, the LR2 is not up to par with most other Land Rovers, but it does offer a few features that give it some capability. It's got a 29 degree approach angle, a 32 degree rear departure angle. It has the ability to ford up to 20 inches of water. Uh, we've got full-time all-wheel drive system, 8.3 inches of ground clearance. It's got hill descent control. And then we've also got a terrain response system that allows the vehicle to adapt to various terrain conditions. It adjusts the throttle sensitivity, stability, traction control, as well as that hill descent control. So by no means is it gonna be as capable as your typical Land Rover model, but it's also gonna offer a pretty good level of standard features that's gonna help you in inclement weather, as well as for the occasional uh, trip down a dirt road. From 2008 to 2012, the LR2 was offered with the same 3.2 liter six cylinder that you get in that Volvo S80 model. It's paired to a six speed automatic transmission and puts out 230 horsepower and 234 pound feet of torque. It will do zero to 60 in 8.4 seconds and sees an EPA rating of 15 miles per gallon in the city and 22 miles per gallon on the highway. In 2013, they updated the engine to this two liter four cylinder turbo, same engine offered in the Evoque model it's paired to a six-speed automatic until 2015 when that was upgraded to a nine-speed automatic. It offers 240 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque. That's good for a zero to 60 time of 8.2 seconds and an EPA rating of 17 miles per gallon in the city and 24 miles per gallon on the highway. Looking inside the LR2, you'll see it's got a very premium look and feel to it, especially when compared with that original Freelander model. Got a lot of wood insets, brushed aluminum, and leather wrap surfaces all comes together very nicely. We've also got a pretty good level of standard options and available features. 
We've got power windows, power door locks, power mirrors. This vehicle is equipped with the optional Meridian audio system, which has really great sound characteristics. Storage space in the door here. Seats are of course full leather and the driver's seat is full power with lumbar support. Steering wheel is leather wrapped and has controls for audio, cruise control, vehicle settings, and Bluetooth. Instrument cluster's got that upgraded five inch screen with that 2013 refresh. And then we've got the seven inch screen in the middle. Go ahead and turn the vehicle on with the push button start. Now, one thing that is surprising about this center screen is that if we put the vehicle into reverse, you would expect a backup camera, but it just says be careful when maneuvering. So that's a bit disappointing. Go ahead and put it back in park. And then that screen interfaces with some of these buttons down below. So we've got control of our audio system, which has AM, FM radio, CD, and then you can also connect your phone or other MP3 device using Bluetooth or down here in the center console, We've got a 12 volt outlet, a USB input, and an auxiliary input. We've also got navigation control, uh, phone connectivity, and then you can also adjust your audio settings. Volume control on this side, mode control on that side. You can turn the screen off with the push of this button. Down below we've got our CD player, hazard lights, this turns off traction control, our hill descent control, and then unlocking and locking of the doors. We've got a dual zone climate control system for the driver and front passenger, air conditioning and heating. Surprisingly, heated seats are not standard. And then right here, we've got the terrain response system with those four different modes. So normal driving, we've got winter driving, so snow and ice, mud and sand. You can toggle between those with these two buttons on the outside. We've got our electronic emergency brake, cup holders, and another 12 volt outlet. The armrests also have these integrated little twisty mechanisms that you can use to lock it in place. So kind of a cool feature that's standard across the Land Rover lineup. Up above, we've got a self-dimming rear view mirror, and then we've got a sunroof that's tilt and sliding. And then you'll also notice we've got another sunroof in the back, although that one does not open. Looking in the back seat of the LR2, you will see that legroom's a little bit on the tight side, but we've got a really nice ambiance with the dual sunroofs. It is worth noting that if you've got excessive glare, you can close these screens to help block that. Center seat does have an armrest built in with two cup holders and a small storage compartment. Also got a little tray down below. We'll give you a quick view up front. And then the seats do fold down in a 60-40 split. You've got to pull the seat bottom up first. If you want to go completely flat, you've got to remove the headrest by pushing it on this button and pulling up. And then we'll push on this button to drop the seat down. So that can help to increase that rear cargo space when these seats are not in use. And then you'll see that the doors also have cup holders and some additional storage space built in. At the rear of the LR2, you'll see that we've got this built-in privacy cover, which helps to conceal the contents of the rear when that hatch is closed. And we've got a pretty good amount of rear cargo space. Boxy dimensions of the vehicle help with that. We've also got a 12 volt outlet over here on the driver's side. And then below the floorboard, we've got our spare tire. Typically when drive testing a Land Rover, I'm going to cut it a little bit of slack in terms of on-road drivability because it's a Land Rover. It's designed for off-road driving. It's got a lot of ground clearance. It's heavy. A lot of off-road gadgetry that affects some of that drivability. But with the Freelander, that's not really the case. This vehicle is designed for driving on paved roads. And while it does have that Land Rover badge and it's got the terrain response system, it's not really a vehicle that's going to venture off the paved path very often. And as a result, I would expect it to compete with the likes of Audi, BMW, and Mercedes. And while overall the ride quality is pretty good, it's quiet, smooth, comfortable, performance isn't all that bad, it doesn't really compete with those German brands. And for that, I'm a little bit disappointed. Pulling onto the highway, we'll put that engine to the test. If we 
hear that turbo kicking in. Definitely some excessive turbo lag with this engine, but once it kicks in, it really throws you back in the seat. Um, definitely very peppy. Uh, I'd say that the engine's more than adequate for this vehicle. Transmission uh, doesn't shift all that smooth, and I find that when that turbo engages, the steering wants to shift one side or the other. So not real impressed with the performance in that sense, but um, you know, overall, it is pretty quick. You're gonna find more than enough power, and the fuel economy is not all that bad either. So as far as the overall drivability, the LR2 is pretty good. Yes, it doesn't meet those German brands in terms of that overall refinement, but we're talking about a pretty high bar with those. Um, if you're looking to get into a Land Rover, you like the Land Rover badge, or you like the Land Rover styling, I still think you're gonna be pretty satisfied with the overall ride quality and performance that you get in this vehicle. So that's the 2013 Land Rover LR2. It's definitely not as cool or off-road capable as your typical Land Rover model, but it's still a pretty nice overall package that's gonna be a lot more practical than those other vehicles. It's far less expensive, it's more fuel efficient, and because it doesn't have all of those off-road goodies, it's also probably gonna be more reliable. It's attractive on the exterior, it's got a nice interior filled with luxury and tech features. The engine offers a pretty good balance of performance and fuel economy, and overall, it's a pretty nice vehicle. If you have any comments or questions on the LR2, leave them in the comments below. For more car reviews, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching.